This week is definitely a week of celebration for me in three different ways, and I wanted to share it with you. Happy end of September. Kim here at Olive City Oasis. Well, I'm not at Olive City Oasis today. I'm here at the Sacramento River near the Sundial Bridge. and enjoying the peaceful serenity of the river and the trees and, well, nature in general. So the first reason I'm celebrating is that, well, I have finished 200 videos here on YouTube. This video today marks the 201st video on my channel. You know, it feels like a real accomplishment for me, 200 videos. I think I have to admit there were times along the way I considered stopping, but I really love the channel. I enjoy sharing my love for nature and gardening, yes, but you know, mostly nature. And so, yeah, I'm not going to quit. And the second thing I am celebrating is that it's my birthday week. So yes, I have finished 59 years of life and now I'm 59 heading into my 60th year of life. So yeah, next year will be the big birthday, the big 6-0. But really, you know, when it comes to age, you're living that next year as you lead up into it. And I have done a lot in the last 59 years and life's been good. I'm very happy with what I've done, but I'm always looking forward and interested and excited about what comes next. So. We'll see what comes next this year. One thing I know is coming next is a second channel because I've just started it this week. Yep, I'll tell you more about that another time, but that is, you know, a new development. It's something to uh, celebrate, I think. And the third reason I'm celebrating this week is that fall is finally here in Northern California. Officially, yes, and Weather-wise, sort of, it's coming and going. It's only going to be 91 today. It is going to go back up to 100 tomorrow, but you know, you got to start somewhere. And definitely the mornings and evenings have been feeling cooler. So I know fall is, is here. It just comes in very slowly and softly in my area, but that doesn't stop me from celebrating it. So now I thought I'd share with you two things that I got for my birthday this week because I think you might be interested. So let's take a look. First, I want to show you this book because of course it's a book. I love books, but this book especially, The Tree Collectors, Tales of Arboreal Obsession by Amy Stewart. Now I have a lot of books by Amy Stewart, including this one, The Drunken Botanist. Uh, she is just such an entertaining writer, and she does a ton of research for her books, including this one. Now, when I heard about this book, I knew I had to get it. So it went at the top of my wish list, and one of my kids got it for me, and uh, it is perfect for me, and maybe for you too. If you love nature, if you love trees, you probably want to get your hands on this book. Let me read to you from the flyleaf so you'll know what it is about. When Amy Stewart discovered a community of tree collectors, she expected to meet horticultural fanatics driven to plant every species of oak or maple. But she also discovered that the urge to collect trees springs from deeper, more profound motives, such as a longing for community, a vision for the future, or a path to healing and reconciliation. In this slightly humorous, informative, often poignant volume, Stuart brings us 50 captivating stories of people who spend their lives in pursuit of rare and wonderful trees and are transformed in the process. Vivian Kay has forged a connection to her Korean elders through her persimmon orchard. Former poet laureate W.S. Merwin planted a tree almost every day for more than three decades until he'd turned a barren estate into a palm sanctuary. And Joe Hamilton cultivates pines on land passed down to him by his once enslaved great-grandfather building a legacy for the future. So that's just a sampling of a few of the 50 stories in this book. But what I found already, and I'm about halfway through it and loving it, is that there are so many reasons that these people collect trees and are fascinated by trees and, and love their tree collections. And it really validates me because I am a budding tree collector myself. 
but I think even if you're not a tree collector, you would love this book. So she divides the book and the stories into various categories based on the people's motivation for collecting the trees. So you have, let me see here, healers, ecologists, artists, curators, educators, community builders, and enthusiasts, seekers, preservationists, and visionaries. And each one of these from all around the world actually are just very, very interesting to read about. And again, I just think you will love it if you try it. Now, in addition to writing this book, Amy Stewart has also illustrated it with beautiful watercolors. Let me show you some examples of her work. How gorgeous is that? Another example of her work. Just look at those colors. I might have to try watercolor myself someday. Oh, look, the monkey puzzle tree. Or a caryat or a kana. As you know, I grow this tree and uh, I'm going to be checking it out later today since I'm here at the arboretum where I first found the tree. Probably going to do an update on my monkey puzzle trees very soon, actually. In addition to the stories about tree collectors, Stuart also includes some fun, informative chapters like how to plant a tiny forest or different types of graphs, bonsai size classifications, how to move a large tree, how to collect without owning a single tree, or how about tips for unauthorized forestry, and several more. I love the titles of her chapters that describe the various tree collectors, such as the memorialist, the mother of trees, the arctic arborist, the habitat builder, the tropical YouTuber, the bonsai artist, the rare fruit collector, the intercontinental collector, the fence builder, the champion of girls, the zone pusher. I can sort of identify with that. Uh, the abstract artist, the independent researcher, the filmmaker, the chronicler of ginkgos. Oh, and so much more. So obviously I'm very happy with that birthday gift and I suggest if you like nature and trees, you get a copy of this book yourself. Now one other gift I wanted to share with you is quite different, but also something you might be interested in. So look at these. One of my kids got me two new bearded irises and I am so happy because I only have uh, two kinds, the deep purple one and a light apricot one. This is Spice Trader and look at those colors. Oh, I can't wait to see that in real life. And the other one is Volcanic Glow. Doesn't that look magnificent? Again, in real life, it will be, you know, 10 times more beautiful. So this is how you get bearded irises, unless, you know, you buy them planted. But as bulbs, they come like this and the roots look all dried out. Well, it's because they are. But you plant them most ideally at this time of the year when it's starting to cool off. In most places, that would be July, August, September, here where I am or anywhere that there's, you know, extreme dry heat, you can wait a little longer. I'm probably going to put these in in October, uh, even November maybe. But you want to put them in six weeks before your first frost. And I'll do a video on planting them. But they give instructions. If you get any of these as a gift or you buy some, they will almost for sure come with instructions like this has but there's not much to planting irises so you could also google it or watch a youtube video like the one i'll put out when i plant these it's gonna be so beautiful 
Thanks for sharing my celebration with me of my 200 videos done, now 201, uh, my birthday heading into my 60th year, and, well, fall finally being here. Until next time, make sure you get out there and spend some happy, relaxing time in nature.